Hey everyone! Today we are going to be talking about Beethoven's Heiligenstadt Testament, one of the most important documents of his life, in which he expresses his despair over his worsening deafness and his resolution to overcome this obstacle. We will be going over the biographical context that led up to the writing of the testament, then going through its main points and themes, and finally taking a look at what it can tell us about Beethoven and his music. Content warning for self unalive, as that is one of the things that Beethoven addresses, but other than that, I hope you enjoy, and here is the Heiligenstadt Testament. In the summer of 1802, Beethoven had been sent by his doctor to the countryside village of Heiligenstadt, Vienna, so that he could rest and seclude himself, which would hopefully improve his worsening hearing. Beethoven seemed to enjoy himself there. He loved nature and would take long walks through the vineyards and by the river. So much for rest, though, as he continued to compose feverishly. As his six-month vacation came to an end, however, he realized with growing anxiety that his deafness was not getting any better, and on October 6th, 1802, he wrote the first half of what is now known as the Heiligenstadt Testament. It starts off as a letter to his brothers, Caspar Karl and Nicholas Johann, though Beethoven left off Nicholas Johann's name, which is something I will get to. In the letter, Beethoven expresses his fear of his worsening deafness and its implications. On the surface, it seemed to be a disaster for his musical career, which was just taking off. Beethoven was gaining popularity, both as a pianist and a composer. He realized that once he lost his hearing, he would no longer be able to play concerts, which was both a personal aspiration and an important source of income. As it turned out, Beethoven continued to compose even after his hearing got much worse, and many biographers and musicologists in retrospect see his deafness as a blessing, because it sheltered him from the musical norms of the outside world and allowed him to carve out his own path. To Beethoven at the time, however, his deafness presented nothing but a barrier to his music. Beethoven's deafness also caused him a deeper source of anxiety because it forced him to isolate himself from other people. In fact, at this point, Beethoven could still play and compose music without too much trouble, but it was getting more difficult for him to take part in conversations and be in the company of other people, which was something he desperately wanted. He would eventually try a variety of accommodations, such as ear trumpets to amplify sound. He also used notebooks called conversation books, in which his friends would write down what they were saying, and Beethoven would respond verbally. However, as Beethoven wrote in the Testament, his deafness was still a source of isolation and misunderstanding. Other people thought that he withdrew from society because he was malevolent or misanthropic, when in reality it was because he couldn't bear to admit that he was losing his hearing, a sense that he, quote, once possessed in the highest perfection. Beethoven talks about how others would hear a flute playing or a shepherd singing in the distance, and he would hear nothing. Instances like these drove him nearly to the point of suicide, and he writes that the only thing that held him back was his art. He felt that he had to keep on living, no matter how miserable an existence it was, until he had composed all that he needed to compose. The letter then turns into a will. He tells his brothers to divide up his property fairly between them, and he tells them that he has long since forgiven them for any harm they had caused him. He speaks of his hope that one day people will understand him, and of his love for humanity and his desire to do good for others. He makes a resolution that when death does come, he will meet it with courage, and he ends by asking the reader to not wholly forget him. So this is the first half of the Heiligenstadt Testament. If you read the full text, which is linked below in the description, it's very moving and emotional, but it seems a little too perfect. The arc from despair to resolution seems a little too straightforward, and that's because this part of the testament is a fair copy of sorts. It shows signs of corrections, it's also unusually neat for Beethoven, meaning he very likely drafted it out beforehand, made some edits, and then copied it over. While it may be somewhat lacking in raw emotion, there's still a lot to uncover. What is on the surface, a letter and will to his two brothers, actually becomes a letter to humanity at large. He addresses the audience as O oh, men, which in modern times I think we can extrapolate to all people. This may also explain why Beethoven left the name of the second addressee blank. It's not just addressed to Beethoven's brothers, but to all of humanity. The other possible reason is that Beethoven had some sort of grudge against Nicholas Johann, the second brother, or that the name Johann reminded him too much of his abusive father, Johann von Beethoven. Either way, the testament is framed as a letter but was never sent. It was found after Beethoven's death in his secret drawer. So presumably, Beethoven 
Jackson's actual intended audience was both himself as a reminder of the path that he had set out on, and as something to be found and read by a much wider audience after his death as a sort of posthumous vindication. There's one small factual detail that I think I should clarify. Beethoven claimed to be about 27 years old when he wrote the testament, however he was actually 31, and that's because he didn't believe the date of birth on his baptismal certificate, and for much of his life he thought that he was a few years younger than he actually was. Now the second half of the testament, written four days later on October 10th, is very different from the first. Beethoven writes that there is no more hope of regaining his hearing, that beloved hope which I brought with me when I came here to be cured at least in a degree I must wholly abandon. As the leaves of autumn fall and are withered, so hope has been blighted. O Providence, grant me at least but one day of pure joy. It is so long since real joy echoed in my heart. The second half was added outside the original letter. It wasn't carefully drafted and edited and copied, and it holds the raw emotion that has been watered down in the first half. Now, I think the most interesting thing about the Heiligenstadt Testament is its emotional tone, because it's not entirely clear what it is. On the one hand, it's a crystallization of Beethoven's sense of resolve and defiance, but it's held in a precarious balance with his despair. There's a sense of hopelessness that his deafness might not get any better, but at the same time, it shows his will to keep on living despite this barrier. Regarding death and thoughts of suicide, he realized that his existence would be a miserable one, but resolved to keep on going, and he decides that when death does arrive, he will face it with courage. So if the Heiligenstadt Testament was a turning point for Beethoven personally, how did it impact him as a composer? It actually resulted in a period of intense productivity. For Beethoven, the bigger the challenge he faced, the more strongly he reacted to meet it. Even in his childhood, when he had felt isolated from others, he would absorb himself in his music and improve his skills at the piano as a form of escape, which is paralleled here in how he reacted to the Heiligenstadt crisis by immersing himself in composition. And on a more mundane note, Beethoven also had to compose to keep himself financially afloat, as his deafness would eventually end his career as a concert pianist. So now for the big question, why does the Heiligenstadt Testament matter? Firstly, it offers us a lens through which we can understand Beethoven's music. The compositions of his middle period, which began right about the time that he wrote the Testament, are often described as heroic. Many of these were works seem to depict a central protagonist who endures trials and emerges triumphant, a clear parallel with Beethoven and the Heiligenstadt Testament. Just to be clear, the Heiligenstadt crisis was not the only thing that led to this change of style. A few months earlier, when he still had some hope of regaining his hearing, he had already declared that he was going to take a new path with his compositions. However, the Testament does help us understand some of the sentiments of these new path compositions. The Testament also gives us an insight view of who Beethoven was as a person, or at least who he aspired to be if we allow room for self-glorification. The popular image of Beethoven is that he was just a crazy old man who basically hated everyone and was kind of a recluse, but that's only partly true. Yes, he was prone to sudden fits of rage, and at times he did turn violent towards strangers and even those he loved. He also believed that everyone was conspiring against him, especially in his later years. However, it's hard to say that he truly hated everyone. Beethoven said, Since I was a child, my greatest happiness and pleasure have been able to do something for others. He loved the idea of a societal hero, someone who would sweep in and solve the political and social problems of the day, and he saw art and music as something that could help people and bring them out of their suffering. In addition, Beethoven's withdrawal from society, which contributed to his negative reputation, was not always by choice. Part of it was his deafness, making it more difficult to communicate with others. Some biographers have also also pointed to his neglectful upbringing, which made it difficult for him to form loving relationships. He also wanted to form romantic relationships, but he usually fell in love with people who either didn't like him back, were already in a relationship, or were outside of his social class, which was a barrier to getting married. He also recognized that he was someone who needed to wholly devote himself to his music, and he believed that romantic relationships would ultimately be a hindrance to his pursuit of that goal. Beethoven wanted to be around other people, but he found it increasingly difficult difficult to do so. The Heiligenstadt Testament is important because it helps create a more complete picture of Beethoven. Not just Beethoven the composer of great works, or Beethoven the mythical figure shrouded in legend, but Beethoven the human. And with that, I think that's about it for this video. I hope you learned something interesting. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you all next time. Bye.